Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Wishing Stars and Mickey Bars. Today we're going to be talking about the reopening of some of the Walt Disney World Yay. resorts and our experience staying in one of them. So stay tuned. We are Robert and Alyssa, also known as Here With The Ears. We lived the entire year of 2019 in the Walt Disney World Resorts, sharing our experiences and adventures on social media and YouTube. Wishing Stars and Mickey Bars is our weekly show where we share tips, stories, and more about living in the Walt Disney World Resorts and our continued Disney adventures. This week, we're talking about the reopening of some of the Walt Disney World Resorts. We got to stay in Boardwalk Villas in a deluxe studio, and you can see that video on our YouTube channel, and we had a really good time. We had a boardwalk view yeah. Which was very different than normal. Yeah, normally you get a boardwalk view and it's like 2 o'clock in the morning before it really gets quiet outside. Yeah. And it never actually got loud outside. It was quiet outside literally the entire time we were there. So yeah. a little bit odd walking out on the balcony and seeing nobody. It was a beautiful nobody. view. It <laughs> yeah. was so pretty. But normally you have the entertainment and you have guests and you have food in the air. And there's just so much going on. And this week, this week, there just wasn't. I mean, it was, so it was opening day, too. So that's probably yes. part of it. There was nobody there yet. However, I feel like it's not going to be super busy there until the park's open. Mm -hmm. Just because people don't want to spend their money or their points or whatever to go and stay in the resorts when it's just the resort. But Yeah, and I understand that. I, I totally get it. But it, at the same time, it was kind of cool having the resort to yourself. Like, that was kind of fun. It was fun. something we all dream of but never actually think it's going to happen. But then when it does, you're so used to Disney being filled with laughter and happiness and just people and cast members and entertainment. And you're just so used to that that it just, it felt so different and almost eerie. Yeah, it was it was like uh, some crazy movie or something yeah. where all of a sudden it's just you and, oh yeah, that other couple down at the end of the boardwalk and, you know, we're just walking around and there's still music and there's mm -hmm. still like a few sounds and stuff but like as you're walking between especially between boardwalk and beach club you could yes. hear the birds and you could hear the water running and then you go over by the storm along bay the pool over there at beach club that's the biggest pool on property and has like a water slide and all this other cool stuff dead dead silence just nothing because the there's no water still. moving yeah. the water slide's not on the little waterfall by the hot tub isn't mm -hmm. on so it's just completely quiet and it was just weird it was really weird but it was it was also kind of cool like having the place to ourselves was kind of cool. it was it was a wonderful experience we're so glad we got to experience it but if you watch our sunset video you'll just you'll see how few people there were and that wasn't something we did that just happened there was just yeah. no one out I yeah was... that was it was really cool if you haven't seen that video you can check it out on our youtube page it's just a walk around the boardwalk right around sunset mm -hmm. we thought it'd be fun to do and as we got around the end of the boardwalk there, we got one of the most amazing sunsets oh. we've ever seen at Disney World. It was... It might be the best one we've ever seen. It was incredible. And I just sat there videoing it going like, this is insane. How in the world is this happening? Which it was... like a painting. It was incredible. But it was also a really great ending because that was the day we were going home. It was our, our day we checked out. So mm -hmm. that was a fun ending to our welcome home back to the resorts. So. It was. And then we just we went back to the boardwalk and just sat there. And looked at the water, enjoyed just hearing the birds and the sounds. Mm -hmm. And we got to see Spaceship Earth. It was all lit up. It was yeah, beautiful. That was pretty cool. And a good reminder that it will still be there when it reopens. Yeah. So very excited we get to ride it again. Although I was looking forward to the refurb, I'm sure whenever it does happen, it'll be great. But I'm kind of glad I get to ride it at least one more time. Cause I think everyone is. Yeah. You kind of need that final moment that yeah. this is my last time And riding. we didn't have that. So it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah, so we had a wonderful time. We got to see cast members who, by the way, are the reason that the magic is there. Mm -hmm. They're just such wonderful people. Of course, we came in. They said, welcome home. Which, like, <laughs> felt entirely different this time. I mean, for us, when we were living in the resorts and stuff, the welcome home was always, like, super special. But after being gone for three months because everything was shut down, you couldn't even go on property to, like, get a burger or something like we normally would. Um, it felt a lot better more like real it felt a lot deeper even though i know they were just saying welcome home because that's you know the thing they're supposed to do but it, yeah but they seem happy awesome. to be back too oh yeah they all seem very happy to be back to work yeah cast members love bring bringing magic to guests and they haven't been able to do that 
and they haven't seen people. They haven't been able to work these last few months. So they had their Mickey hands they were waving with, and we got to see a couple of our cast member friends, which was really exciting. So we just yeah. had a really good time. Had some great food. Yes, we had some awesome Ooh. food. We ate at several different places, and yep. just to let you know, the Disney food is still delicious. So yes. no worries there. That has there. not changed at all. So they did a great job there. Oh, we did, we went to Trattoria for dinner for the first time ever. Yeah, we've done breakfast there a yeah. bunch because they had the breakfast with Rapunzel and Flynn and Eric and Ariel. But we've never done dinner, so we had to check that out, and I was very happy with it. I thought oh, it was a great it was choice. It was incredible. Oh, it was my some goodness. awesome Italian food there. So yes, it was. if you're on the boardwalk anytime soon, they're open for breakfast and dinner. So I uh, highly recommend getting dinner there. And breakfast was great, too. There's no characters. Same, a lot of the same dishes, but no characters. So it's not quite as fun. Although I really enjoyed the breakfast. I had a good steak. It so. was. It, it's just a different experience, though, and you have to know that before you go. Yeah, for sure. So. On Tuesday, we asked you all what your questions were about the Walt Disney World Resort's opening over on our Facebook and Instagram pages, and we're taking the most popular questions and answering those for you here. So one of the main questions we got was, can you book dining at a different resort than what you're staying at? So essentially resort hopping, which yes. is what a lot of people love to do, us included. We generally eat once at the resort we're staying at and then eat pretty much all over the other resorts because we like... All of the good Disney food. food is the best. It really That's... is. So the current rules only apply to the resort stays up until July 10th, which is the day before Magic Kingdom opens and Animal Kingdom opens. Yeah. After July 10th, so July 11th on, we actually don't know. We have no idea what the rules are going to look like because Disney has not announced those yet. But what we do know is that until July 10th, you are allowed to resort hop if you have a reservation at the other resort. So mm -hmm. let's say, like in our case, we stayed at Boardwalk. If we wanted to go over to, um, let's say, Wilderness Lodge, we could make a reservation at Whispering Canyon and go to dinner there. Mm -hmm. So that is an option. The transportation might be a little bit of an issue unless you have a car, just because there are no uh, parks that you can go to on the buses and boats and things like that. So you have to take a bus to Disney Springs to take a bus to your resort. Um, it just which be time consuming. I mean, it, it kind of is that way anyway when everything's open because you have to go to a park, but it's easily, usually a little faster to go to a park and then transfer. So um, just keep that in mind. It takes a little longer to get there. If you have a car, that's going to be the better situation. But yeah, they're allowing you to resort hop with a dining reservation. And you can only make dining reservations if you have an existing resort reservation. So if you're staying in one of the resorts in the next couple weeks, then you will be able to make a dining reservation at any of the other resorts. But if you're like us and not staying in the resorts anymore, you can't make any more dining reservations, which makes me sad because I have other restaurants I'd really like to go revisit that I've been missing for the last three months. But in time, I'm sure we'll be able to go soon. It will so, happen. It will yeah. come. So another big one was about transportation, the buses, Skyliners, boats. Hmm. What do we know about those? Well, we know that they're still there and they look, pretty especially the skyliner just okay. hanging there you know yeah. and the gondolas when they start moving it looks really cool it did we could see those from the boardwalk yeah. they did start running them too but nobody so nobody on them obviously since they transport you back and forth to the parks that aren't open um but all we know right now is that the buses are there and the buses mm -hmm. are running to disney springs and back and they do have all these new social distancing measures on the bus they've got the different seats that are marked off they have dividers between the seats they're only allowing I think 18 to 20 people per bus now. So it's very limited on the buses, but they do have buses from Disney Springs and the resorts. But mm -hmm. as far as boats and monorails and things like that, we're just kind of waiting to hear the official word. Yeah. I have a feeling we're going to see at least most of those transportation modes open right back up when the parks open, especially the monorail, if nothing else. But well, it makes sense to help with physical distancing because the more things you have open, the more you can spread people sure. out. So that does make a lot of and sense. And you don't have people waiting in line all for the same bus or whatever. So yeah. so we're very interested to see what Disney says about that. I'm sure we'll know something soon. Yeah. Several people want to know what dining is like right now. So as you mentioned before, there are no characters except at Tobolino's for breakfast. Right. But how is it different than before? Well, I mean, there's nobody else there, so it's it's a, it's a lot true. quieter. <laughs> and those that are there, most of them don't have kids, so uh, a lot quieter. <laughs> yeah, but it, it I mean, the food was still great, and the service was phenomenal because 
you know, you're one of four tables in the whole restaurant. So they give you a lot of attention. Yeah, we actually had really nice chats with the servers every time. I think we ended up spending way more time there than we normally do. But just because we were chatting, it wasn't anything to do with them. But And they were just chatting because, well, they had nothing else to do because there's nobody else there. So yeah. it was it was a very different experience as far as that mm-hmm. goes. The food was still excellent. The plating and presentation was awesome. Did a great job with all of it. It mm-hmm. just was a lot emptier. And I will say this. We didn't have to have reservations for anything. We only ate at the resort we were staying at, at Boardwalk mm-hmm. and Beach Club, which is right across the water. But we could walk to it. Um but we were able to walk up and get a reservation or a table, I guess, whenever we wanted. We didn't have to make a reservation. I think when the parks open on July 11th, that's probably going to be a different story. We're going to have a lot more people staying on property and, and the restaurants will be yeah, full there of. Yeah, there will probably but be a lot more people there. It was, other than the, the number of people in there, it was very similar to how it used to be. So they don't hand out menus anymore. That is something. They give you a barcode to scan and you scan that to see what menu. And it is a limited menu. So there are things that you may go to your favorite restaurant expecting to find something that you normally get. They may not have that. They may have it. It's completely dependent on if they're able to do it in the kitchen right now and their suppliers. They're having Mm -hmm. a big issue with suppliers right now, we heard. Yeah, certain Mm -hmm. random items they're just having trouble getting in. Mushrooms was one of them. Yeah, mushrooms was one of the things they couldn't seem to get. But part of it is the physical distancing in the kitchen, the way they've Mm -hmm. set everything up. Certain dishes just can't be prepared the way they used to be. So... I mean, it didn't really bother me. I order steak pretty much everywhere, so they all have steak Yeah, he's steak very still. happy with that. Like, they all have steak. I didn't get steak at uh, Trattoria for dinner, though. I did get pasta. I got chicken Well, because they said all their pasta was homemade. Yeah. It's right and, there in-house. And it was so. delicious pasta. But even not getting a steak, there's still plenty of options on the menu. Yeah, so. and there were definitely plenty. It's just... Um, the, a lot of the time is taken in prepping things because of the new procedures they have in place, which we greatly appreciate. We love the safety procedures they're putting in place, but it does create sometimes a longer experience when you're eating. That's just something to keep in mind. If you have a certain time frame that you're trying to keep things within, it may take longer than normal just because they have to be careful with how many people they interact with and they have to wash their hands constantly and the chefs have to maintain physical distancing themselves. So it's just something to think about. That yeah. was... That was a little bit. I had a little bit of time to it, which part yeah. of it was our talking to. So yeah, there's that. and again, we like to chat, so that was a little <laughs> bit of it. There's that. This is going to be right up your alley, though. Yes. They were. Someone asked, or several people actually <laughs> asked, what resort activities are still available? And for those who are listening that don't know, mm-hmm. there are a ton of activities normally at the Walt Disney World yeah. Resorts. Everything you can imagine from renting a pontoon boat to the little speed racers mm-hmm. or sea racers, to the fishing expeditions that they have, to crafts and ceramics and mm-hmm. movies on the green and all these different things. Surrey bikes. It's just a ton of stuff you can do. And people want to know if it's still there because that's like a big draw for the Disney resorts. It was yeah, for us so too. So I'll reference what isn't available right now, but I'm also going to talk about what is available. Now, things like Surrey bikes and boats. They don't have those right now. That's just because of how many people are interacting and trying to keep people apart and the cleaning that would be involved for each Mm -hmm. of those. So they're not able to offer those right now. So things like that are not available. The fishing that he mentioned, Mm -hmm. um, they don't have things like that. But they do still have crafts, especially at the Disney Vacation Club resorts, the community halls. Mm -hmm. I love doing the crafts. Like (laughs) He'll tell you. He he sits there with me and he enjoys them, but he enjoys watching me do them. He doesn't necessarily do them with me. Most of the time. Every once in a while, I'll pull them in. Every once in a while. I think I pulled you out of the pillow one. You did a little yeah, pillow. Halloween I, pillow. I did work on a Halloween pillow. Yeah. See, I got you on one. I've done a couple of the crafts. <laughs> Usually I just watch and take pictures. And... Yeah, so they are a lot of fun. The community halls do still have crafts. And they are still doing poolside activities. So there are some they can't do, but they're doing as many as they possibly can. Still doing fun things like um, bingo and name that tune. A lot of the things they can do where no one has to necessarily leave the pool or be crowded together. So they did a really mm-hmm. good job with that, and they actually are doing the poolside activities longer than they used to. It used to be three to four hours. This time they did it for about six hours. Yeah, I think it was six. Yeah, so it was a decent amount of time, which is great if you have kids, because that's a wonderful way to let them be entertained, especially if you're going before the parks reopen. Mm-hmm. That just gives you something extra to do. So we really appreciated that. The cast members are working so hard to still give everything they can. Now, one of our favorite things to do is make s'mores at the resorts. We love roasting marshmallows. The campfires, yeah. 
but they cannot do the campfires right now. We are heartbroken about that. Yeah. So hopefully those will come back. I'm sure. But they are still doing movies outside. Now they don't have them as often, but that's just because of the limited amount of people there right now. Yeah. But they were still doing them. So Boardwalk was doing it two nights, and then Beach Club was doing it two nights, and then you could walk between the two. So we were very excited. They had Lilo and Stitch playing the last night we were there, mm-hmm. the second night. Yeah. Oh, it's such a cute movie. I love that movie. It's a very underrated. It, it really, really is. is. I love the story. I love the dynamic, the sisters, Stitch. I love it all. So they are still doing movies, and you can still check out DVDs at community halls. So that is a fun thing to do, especially if you have a rainy day and can't be at the pool. That's something that kids love to do. What am I saying? We love to do That's it. True. That's, That's true. That's true. Anyway, so we love the resort activities, yeah. and we are very grateful that they're trying to continue as many as possible. And if you're not familiar with the Disney Vacation Club resorts, many of them have what they call community halls, mm-hmm. which is essentially an activity center for the kids slash adults, mm-hmm. and they'll have everything there from coloring sheets to ceramics painting and things like that, yeah. um, and most of those things are still there. They do still have uh, video games that you can use. Of course, they have to wipe down the controllers in between uses and things like that and some of them have like foosball tables and stuff but not all the resorts have those and the one thing that is missing as well that i'm missing from the resorts as far as activities are the fun runs they have told us those are eventually going to come back but for now no fun runs so i'm kind of sad because i really enjoy those and i was kind of hoping to do one while we were there but it just didn't work out since they're not doing those yeah hopefully soon though pretty much anything that involves a lot of people being near each other They just can't do those right now. They're trying to encourage physical distancing, and we appreciate it. They're working really hard to keep everyone safe, especially their cast members, because they're there with so many people. Mm -hmm. So we do appreciate everything Disney's doing for all that. There Mm -hmm. are new pool hours, so we've had several people ask about this. I know they were concerned because Disney said limited pool hours. They are limited, but not as limited as you would think. Yeah, the, what do you call it, the quiet pool or the Mm -hmm. leisure pool or whatever you want to call it, those hours are pretty much the same as normal yeah. like I was looking at the hours going I think this is pretty normal like they opened at what seven in the morning yep. and closed at 11 at night or 10 at night so 11, yep. I, it's pretty long hours for the pool yeah. unless it's 24 hours you can't get much more than that so we enjoyed the pi- the quiet pool there mm-hmm. was there were three other people there it was a family and so we were it was a very quiet pool very I mean, quiet <laughs> so there was no one else there not even sitting in chairs so that one was open 7 to 11, and then the regular pool was open 11 to 9. Yep. Yeah, so limited in what they normally have. It does normally open sooner, but it's still, during the heat of the day, you can still go to the pool, mm-hmm. which is really nice. And again, the cast members are there even longer doing pool activities. So. And it was open 10 hours. Like I feel like that's a pretty decent length it's of time. It's still a good <laughs> amount of time. You can still you know wear yourself out at the pool yeah. and enjoy the pool slides. You can enjoy it unless you're at Boardwalk and you have the creepy clown staring at you. Then it's just terrifying. That's, it's a fun. It's a fun slide. It's a though. fun slide, but that's the real reason we went over to the quiet pool is because the creepy clown. Just we went, saying. We went down it once. I did go down it once, and then I left because he's creepy. <laughs> it is creepy. At the restaurants, mm-hmm. so some things have changed, some haven't. Mm-hmm. Do they still accept discounts? As of now, they all still do. All those okay. that were supposed to accept. Annual Pass Holder, Disney Vacation Club, or Tables in Wonderland discounts, and I assume the Disney Visa Rewards discounts, because there are a few of those, I think. Mm -hmm. Any of those that we asked about, they all still take them, so if you have those, you're good. You still get your discounts. We got 10% off of all of our meals, because we had our DVC card, so. Yeah, so that was it. We were very happy about that. It's those little discounts here and there. They Mm -hmm. add up. So another question we got quite a few of was about the masks. Where are they required to be worn? Are guests following the rules that are now in place? And how are the cast members doing through all this? Yeah, so the masks are pretty much everywhere you go. (laughs) Gotta wear them. Period. End of story. So that's pretty much it. No, I'm kidding. You can take off your mask in your room, obviously. It's your room. And you can also take it off on the pool deck. So if you go into the pool area, you can take it off to go hang out in a chair or go swim. Please do not try to swim with a mask on. Not a good idea. But you can take them off anywhere in that pool area, and you can also take them off when you're eating. So if you go over to a table service restaurant, you do need to have your mask on when you go there and when you're asking for a table and getting seated and all that. Mm -hmm. But once you're seated at the table, you can take your mask off. 
Now, that being said, the cast members who are there will all be wearing masks the entire time. Your server, the people in the kitchen cooking, the host at the front, the people at the front desk, the lifeguard in the pool. Yes, the lifeguard in the pool is wearing a mask. Every cast member is wearing a mask Mm -hmm. all the time. So as far as that goes, I think we saw pretty much everyone obeying the rules. If they saw anyone with their mask off, which I only witnessed this once, I saw someone standing around, like three or four people standing there talking to each other outside of one of the resorts. And a cast member just happened to be walking by and stopped and was like, hey, could you guys put your masks on again real quick for me? That'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, you got to have them on in all public areas. Mm -hmm. And they put their mask back on and kept their conversation going. And he went on with his day. So I feel like they're doing a really good job handling it. Of course, being cast members, they're super nice about everything. (laughs) And it's like... Kill them with kindness, I guess, because they were just super nice about everything the whole time. But they do say something if you don't follow the rules. They will enforce the rules one way or another. But it was wonderful to see the cast members. And again, they were so kind about everything. And Mm -hmm. they were cleaning constantly. Anywhere you looked, you'd see a cast member cleaning. I don't even know where they all came from. Like, you turn around, there's someone behind you, like, wiping down the handrail. You're like, where did you even come from? It just... It was incredible the amount of cleaning we saw just in those Mm -hmm. two days. They were so good about making sure that everything was clean and wiped down constantly because things get touched by guests and even cast members. And so they were just constantly making sure that everything was cleaned. And we really appreciated that. Yeah. How about mobile check-in? Is that different from what it was before? Is there anything new about that? Well, I think it depends which mobile check-in you're talking about. If you're talking about mobile check-in for the resorts, online Mm check-in is still pretty much the same as it always was, except they really, 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 (laughs) really want you to use it now. And I say that because we got two or three emails and a couple phone calls and voicemails and there's signage all over the place, all asking you to please use online Mm check-in. So we tried and it didn't work in the app several times. Kind of something to do with having 135 rooms last year that were on the system and like it doesn't like you having that many rooms. I don't know. I didn't build it. I just know it doesn't like us. So (laughs) online check-in doesn't usually work for us, but we were able to get it working on the computer, not the app. So we did online check-in and we did not have to stop at the front desk to do anything at all. We could go straight to our room. However, we did stop at the front desk once we got all checked in and everything to pick up our magic bands because they did not ship those just because we booked a little bit late, so they had to get sent to the resort. But they had a window for that. They had a little magic band pickup window, and of course, at the front desk, they have all the protective shields across the whole thing for the cast members, and they just looked up our name, passed it across underneath the little plexiglass thing, and we went back to our room. So overall, pretty seamless process, but also pretty much the same as it used to be. Now, the other online check-in is for dining reservations. Mm -hmm. If you make a dining reservation, they now have a little card right outside the restaurant where it has a QR code and you scan it and you check yourself in for your reservation. Mm -hmm. So it's like letting them know that you're here and you don't have to like interact with cast members or anything. You just kind of scan there and then stand off to the side and they'll call you for your table. It was very interesting. We didn't have reservations, so we didn't use it, but I did see people using it. So that it was, was really cool to watch. It, it was, was a different. very I think, impressive system. I think once Disney eventually allows us to make reservations for future dates besides through July 10th, and they're in the parks especially, mm-hmm. but even not in the parks, just in the resorts, I think it's going to be a much more efficient system mm-hmm. compared to the way it is now where you wait in line to talk to the host to check in. You can just check in right away on your phone. But without you know more than a half dozen people in the restaurant... It, didn't really make it's hard much to difference. test the theory when there are didn't that make many a lot of difference, anyway. but it was still kind of cool. It was yeah, kind of cool. It was nice to see. So I think the last question we have is probably the biggest one, or one of the one of the best ones. Honestly, I really like this question. Whoever asked this one, do the resorts still feel magical? I love this question so much. So it's not technical. It's just what we thought, and you can form your own opinion if you want to watch our live walkthrough of Beach Club and Boardwalk and the sunset at Boardwalk. But in our opinion, the resorts were still magical. You're still Mm -hmm. on Disney property. You're still um, talking to cast members who are the reason that there's so much magic at Walt Disney World anyway. And they were so much fun, so exciting, you know, with their smile, welcome home. It was so great to hear. And you get the music and the smells that get pumped in. Mm -hmm. And 
no, there weren't some of the entertainment that were, are normally there. Some of the food options on the boardwalk weren't there, but we still had a really great time. We got to enjoy mm-hmm. the photo booth. They had one of those they open. They did. They had one of the photo pass photo booths open, and they have mm-hmm. a, what, 19 step cleaning yep. process for it or something. It's crazy. But yeah. it was really great being back, and it felt very magical. It was like we were back home again. It, it was pretty amazing. The sunset we saw was yeah. pretty amazing. That helped the, a lot. One of the best we've seen. But but there's something familiar even without about that, it. it just felt good to be back. And yeah, it's a lot quieter. It feels very different without so many people. But at the same time, it feels very much like home. And it, it still was pretty magical. And I, I think we do have to attribute a lot of that to cast members. Yeah. They make or break the experience. And they have absolutely made it for us. That's mm-hmm. for sure. So. Yeah, we had so much fun just seeing about the activities, and we did a few of the little ones they had. Mm-hmm. We went to the pool, and honestly, we just had a wonderful ending to our stay there with that sunset, and then we just sat on the boardwalk and just mm-hmm. looked out at the water and got to see Spaceship Earth, and even though we couldn't go to it, we could still see it. See it seeing yeah. it all lit up like it always has been, that's home. That's yeah. Disney. It brought some normalcy back, too, which it was It did. Nice. It was wonderful. So... Is it the same? No. But is it a new type of magical? Yeah. Yeah. And I'd totally go back. If I had enough points to book another night or two, I'd just go back in the next couple weeks because there's nobody there. It's kind of cool. And we didn't even mention the food. I mean, Disney food is magical in and of itself. That's true. Disney food is is some kind of magical. It adds some magical magical to my waistband. But, you know, it magically grows my stomach and, yeah. No, is that magically delicious? It's, <laughs> it's magically delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. So, yeah, di- different kind of magic, but still very, very magical. So. Yeah, so thank you all for those questions. Yeah, those were they really were good so questions. They were so good, and we hope this helped many of you who had the same questions. We just wanted to answer some of those for you this week. Now, next week, we are very excited about our topic. So next week, we're going to be talking about holidays at Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be talking about the parks and also the resorts, holidays at the resorts, because next week, this show will be coming to you on July 5th, right after July 4th. We may have a fun special upload coming for July 4th, so keep an eye out on our YouTube channel yeah. for that if you're a fan of July 4th. But we're going to talk about it. We've got a lot of different holidays In the year, and Disney celebrates pretty much all of them. So we were there last year for every single one, and we've got some favorites. We've got some ideas, some thoughts. Head over to our Instagram or Facebook, whichever one you use, at Here With The Ears, and look on Tuesday. We'll be posting up our weekly question and answer post where you can drop in your questions about holidays at Walt Disney World, Mm -hmm. and we'll answer those on next week's episode. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of Wishing Stars and Mickey Bars. And until next time, we're here with the ears.